all right welcome to the video and this is tutorial number seven this is an object oriented approach for tensorflow so we are going to continue our example on diabetes data set so we already are doing from tutorial number five and six we are doing uh, tensorflow on the same data set now let's learn how to code more professionally uh, in python uh, and tensorflow of course but uh, using object oriented approach so in this video we are going to use object oriented uh, approach to to code the same problem but so let me just open up my code what we did last time so if you so the code is going to be same i'm just going to convert that into an object oriented code so if i open this all right so hopefully my internet is a little bit slow right now oops so here you can see in this video i taught you how to uh, write a dnn model for a diabetes data set so now in this video we are going to convert that code into an object oriented code so how do you write an object oriented code in python so let's get started so let me just close all of that so here is the code that we developed last time so i'm just going to do a copy paste and show you how do we develop an object oriented code so uh, let me show you a glimpse so this is the entire object oriented code uh, how Professionally, we are going to organize our code here. You can see I have defined a function for test for train and I have also given all the commenting out pro properly. So let's see what and how do we can create an object oriented code. Let's get started. All right. So uh, I hope you guys have uh, understood. So what I'm assuming that from the last video, you have the code, uh, you understood what you are doing. And simply in this video, I'm going to teach you how to convert it into an object oriented code. So my job would be just to explain you how to how do I convert it. So I assume that you know the code that I did in my last video. All right. So first of all, if you observe and from the last video, if I open my notebook, we imported this module. So in the class, what you should do usually is should I try and accept block. So I say try to import these libraries. If these libraries are there, print library loaded. Uh, else say one or more library did not found. So you want to do that, right? So after that, step two was to process the data, right? So I created a class known as neural network. Uh, it will inherit from object, right? This is the default constructor in it. And um, so the problem is, guys, if you observe, if you are an efficient coder, uh, you let me show you this number of epochs, number of epochs. It's re it's being repeated a lot of times. I want to automate this, right? Why why should I type it every single time? So in class object oriented code, I pass number of epoch and I can use it whenever I want in the class. So I pass epochs. I pass batch size because it's being repeated every single time. So I'm going to do that. So this function process data is absolutely same as this function. Absolutely same. No, no, no change at all. Here you can see. Um, and simply we will return that train test split object instead of uh, the train set train test split. Here you can see return X train X test Y train Y test. Here I say self.xtrain, self.xtest because I can use this from anywhere uh, in my class. So I'm, I'm using the, the, the parameter self. All right, great. And then step three, we create a feature column. So if you observe, we create all this feature column. Simply, I'm going to pass all of that. So I'm doing the same thing, but instead of returning the list here, so I say return feature column. Instead, I say self.feature column. So I can reuse it again uh, in the code. And now in the next step, we created, oops, what's happening to my zoom? Sorry for that. All right. In the next step, we created a, a trained, uh, we created an input function, the eval function and the predict function. So I create an, a, I create a function to do all of that. You can see. So I'm calling the X train. I'm calling the process. So here we also we did, we like, we were calling the function known as process and we used to get all these parameters. So here I'm doing an object oriented approach. So I just say self dot process data, which will call the upper upper uh, upper function and get all the data so just doing the same thing input function changes to self dot input function and similarly rest of it remains the same now after this is done step four was we're creating a model now instead of creating a model i define a function known as create model so you can see which will create a model and return the model all right so here you can see step five would be uh, basically history right we were training the model we were testing the model so why not define the function so I define a function known as train. It will take the model, basically whatever model we create. So here you can see. So now the, so here you can observe. So I'm using epoch, self.epoch. So since self.epoch was repeated a lot of times, I pass that as an argument in the default constructor. So I can use it anywhere in my code. So here you can see that. This is how you write efficient code, guys. 
So similarly for the test function, and now it's just four line of code to run this network. So I can just say n equals to neural network. I can pass in the epochs. I can pass in the batch size. Then I can say n e model equals to n dot create model, which will create the model. History equals to n dot train because we have already defined a function known as n dot train. Result equals to n dot test. That's it. So let me show you uh, to let me let me run this for you. Uh, so if I do kernel reset and run all cells hopefully it won't give me any errors so right now we are running this oops sorry this is not the not the code that i want so i think the code for the classes uh is on my other window so just let me run that for you so let me bring it here so if i say kernel oops kernel reset and run all so essentially we are creating the entire class and simply using four lines to write our neural network. So hopefully it will take time, of course. So here you can see it's right now doing all that, all of that processing data, creating model. Then it's gonna train the model for a specified epoch. So here you can see the loss is decreasing from 55 and so on. So, and we got an accuracy of 69.669. So that's it for this video. In this video, I taught you how to convert a code into an object-oriented code in Python. So hope you guys enjoyed it, the tutorial. And by the way, this code is already there in the description section below. So make sure to check that out. And you can also find this code on my blog. So make sure you subscribe to my blog as well. Uh, let me just show you. I upload a lot of articles on Raspberry Pi, machine learning and stuff like that. So you see, I have a lot of articles. So on the top bottom section, here you can see, here you have a follow button. So make sure to follow. So because whenever I uh, upload any article, that's how you won't miss any article from me. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys are enjoying. Thank you very much for your love, for your support. We have reached 2000 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for all the support. And I hope uh, to create best contents for you guys. I'm trying my best to deliver the best contents. So as and when I get time, uh, I'm a student here, I'm studying, I'm working, and also I'm make, trying to make uh, videos for you guys. Thank you for your support, love, and see you guys in the next video where we will be building a Keras model for a cat dog, and uh, we'll be predicting a pneumonia from chest x-rays. So stay connected with me. Right, just gonna stop that.